Raider Nation, what's going on? You're watching the Raiders Report, and we have some breaking news to cover here. The Las Vegas Raiders have released safety Dalen Levitt. Now, we're going to break all of this down. We'll talk about Levitt, how much money it ends up saving the silver and black, because you save about $2.4 million. So for Levitt, he's been on the team since 2018. And this offseason, Josh McDaniels, Dave Ziegler, they actually re-signed him, brought him back, but his contract, none of it was guaranteed. And Levitt's always been a player that I've admired because he's not really this overly athletic guy by any means. And I had the opportunity a few years ago to sit down interview Levitt here on the Raiders report I opened it up to the nation to ask him a lot of questions and he's always been somebody on the roster bubble last season though I actually thought he did a halfway decent job 62.8 overall grade according to PFF a 70.7 run defense grade 60.8 coverage grade and when I sat down and I looked at the 53 man roster projection for the Raiders Levitt was one of these dudes that I was like man this new staff really values special teams play, and Levitt has always brought that. Last season, he had a career-high 35 tackles, two PBUs, two forced fum or fumble recoveries, but Levitt's best ability was being a gunner on special teams. Punt returns, kick returns, that's where Levitt was really making his money in the NFL. With this move, though, the Raiders now have 89 players on the roster. And we're going to be talking about some potential free agents that the Raiders could potentially sign because today is the first day of training camp. And made a joke, and I'll probably say the joke here in a little bit, but what's your one-word reaction to the Raiders releasing Dalen Levitt? Let me know what you guys are thinking down in the comment section. My one word reaction is, I guess first it would be kind of sucky because I don't know who made the joke out here in the studios where they were like, imagine training camps like the first day of your job, right? You show up on the very first day and they're like, hey man, it's not going to quite work out. And I'm not trying to make a joke because obviously losing your job sucks, but it, it definitely is a shitty thing. I can also say it is expected because of a lot of the other safeties that the Raiders have. I mean, you have one of the best young guys in the entire NFL, Travon Merrick. I truly believe in a year, maybe two years down the road, you could have a situation where Merrick is the top safety in the league. He had a 77 overall grade, according to PFF, in terms of coverage, and that's what I'm looking for in Patrick Graham's system. Also, the Raiders have Jonathan Abram, who, sure, he can't cover worth a lick, but he does offer you also some special teams value. He had 116 tackles last season. He's a box safety. Maybe Patrick Graham tries to use him in a Jabril Peppers type of role, but also Roderick Teamer they re-signed. You have a fourth rounder out of Missouri and Tyree Gillespie, who I know that this Raiders staff is very high on. And then Deron Harmon. I mean, Deron Harmon, I really truly believe is going to be the other starter next to Merrick. So, don't get me wrong. The safeties here, you end up probably keeping four, maybe five. They couldn't figure out a way to honor Dale and Levitt to make sure that, I don't know, he was going to make the team. They probably were like, well, wasn't going to happen. Let's move on from him now. But it also creates an area because you have extra money. If you save $2.4 million, that puts the Raiders' salary cap space somewhere around $19.9 million. Plenty of money to go out and sign some big-name free agents, which I'll break down some names coming up here in just a bit. If the Raiders make a big-time move, we're going to go live, so I want you to subscribe. How do you do it? Scan this QR code right here with your cell phone, so get out your phone. Get on your camera. All you got to do is hover over this bad boy with your camera, and then you can sub. If you're watching this on your mobile device, look down below. There's going to be a subscribe button. There's a notification bell. Click both of those things. That way, you never miss a thing. So coming up next here on the Raiders Report, I figured I would break down some Big-time free agents that are available that if I was McDaniels, if I was Dave Ziegler, I'd pick up the phone and give these guys a call. The first name I'm bringing up here, yeah, no shit, it's Indomitian Sue. There was a report that came out earlier in the week, and I've discussed this a few times on the show, that it sounds like Sue, if he's going to sign with an NFL team, he wants it to happen before training camp. Now, today is technically the very first day of Raiders training camp, but actual practices 
don't start until tomorrow. So if you're like, hey, Sue, would you want to come in, be ready for the first day tomorrow? That would be a pretty ideal situation because if the season started today, I get it. The season doesn't actually start today, but if it did, the Raiders would have the worst defensive tackle room in the league. You have Jonathan Hankins. Right now, he's on the pup list. Bilal Nichols, he's on the pup list. And sure, you drafted Neil Farrell Jr. You drafted Matthew Butler to be those next guys, but what if they're not ready yet? They are rookies after all. And then after that, the depth is just, it's not great. So Ndamukong Sue is definitely going to be the name that I am monitoring all day today. Another name to keep in mind is Jamie Collins. He's got a lot of experience playing in similar roles with past Patriots teams. He's a great 3-4 linebacker, can still play at a pretty high level. And if you are a little bit worried about your edge rushers and not necessarily your edge rushers, but your uh, edge linebackers when you go to that 3-4. Jamie, it would be an absolutely great signing because he can also bring a lot of that veteran leadership. That's, I think, what you're already seeing Deron Harmon do. And then another name. This is a buy-low candidate. I'm going to go with Trey Flowers. Flowers, over the past two seasons, has battled a lot of injuries. The best years he's ever had, though, were you go back a few years when he was with the New England Patriots. Then uh, Patricia goes to the Detroit Lions. He then can be a solid edge rusher there. They gave him a six-year, $90 million contract, and Flowers was supposed to be a good fit in that team. Another player to at least keep in mind, because let's just say you are a little bit worried about your inexperience at the inside linebacker position. I love me some... Divine Diablo, don't get me wrong, and I'm really excited about Denzel Perriman. I'm really excited about Jayon Brown, but there have been some discussions inside of the organization that besides those three linebackers, who else is really going to truly help out? I don't have that answer, but Hightower to me knows the system. Again, knows the coaching staff, can be that player coach, and well, Perriman's going to need a breather here or there. I do think Hightower makes some sense. Another defensive tackle to keep in mind is Linval Joseph. And I'm going to throw out the Joseph name because I really think that the Cleveland Browns, they invest in Sheldon Richardson. There's a report going out right now that the Browns aren't interested in Sue. They have their eyes on Sheldon, and he's right now the top defensive tackle out there. I'd say the second best free agent DT is Linval Joseph. And with the recent news of Trayvon Mullen, and I know for a fact, the Raiders are really, really concerned about that foot cleanup, and he had that foot cleanup on May 3rd. So another name I'm going to throw out here is Janoris Jenkins, the Jackrabbit, who played in Patrick Graham's system not too long ago. Actually had a halfway decent year last year with the Tennessee Titans, but Jenkins could be somebody if this silver and black team is really worried about their outside corners because it sounds like right now it's Rocky Sin, Anthony Averett, and Amik Robertson. I love me some Amik Robertson, but Janoris Jenkins is an upgrade over Amik. So if you are actually concerned with those players on the pup list, I do think that it makes some sense to make a move for Jenkins. So those are just a few big name NFL free agents that I would like the Raiders to pick up the phone and call. Some of you are like, well, wow, I can't believe you didn't mention Daryl Williams. It's because... Everything I understand, it's Alex Leatherwood, it's Brandon Parker. They're going to get the first shot at right tackle, and then they'll go from there. So what's the next move that the Raiders make, if you can predict it? Let me know down in the comments, because personally, I actually think the next move that the Raiders make is extending Darren Waller. I actually think that's the, the, the next move they make. In terms of free agency moves, it could be somebody else, but the next move that I think that this organization makes is extending Waller. And I've always said that the projection that I have is him getting about $16 million per year, making him the highest paid tight end in the league. We'll see if that ends up being true or not. So I made this video for y'all, and it's totally off the cuff here, but that's what we do on the Raiders Report. We try to keep you updated on everything going on. Around the silver and black, the Raiders have released Dalen Levitt. If anything else happens, we will let you know this move does save them $2.4 million. I wish him the best of luck. I hope that he can find a spot on a team somewhere. He's been in the NFL since, been with the Raiders since 2018. But I'm getting ready to head out. And keep your phones close to you because I do think today is going to be an eventful day. The Raiders move on from Dale Levitt, 89 players on the roster, almost $20 million in salary cap space. Will they make another move? If they do, I'm going to go live.